Hello and welcome back. My name is Annemarie Kiefer. In this unit, I will tell you about data mapping and filter mechanisms. In this unit, we are going to explain how the data management tools allow for field values to be defined at setup time without changing the scenario definition. We also show how to maintain a global table at scenario setup time. Define a condition to filter the SAP Business One events picked up by the integration framework. Let us look at the data management tools. The data management tools provided by the integration framework let you develop and test the scenario using one set of field values and then at deployment time the consultant or customer can plug in their own field values without any change to the scenario design. If you have requirements at customer side to define specific settings, add them to the documentation of the scenario package. In this week's scenario, we saw how to define a global table. Global tables are used to store related data and can be referenced in an XSLT. In this scenario, we use a global table to obtain a customer code that correlates to a vendor. Global properties are like variables, but you can set a default value or, a, or you can also define a list of values. At scenario setup time, the consultant or customer can enter a value or choose one of the enumerations that you defined. Local properties are like global properties, except that the scope is limited to a scenario pack step. Value mappings can only be used if the scenario has a receiver system and al allow you to map field values for the receiver system. However, if you need a value mapping, although you do not have a, rece a receiver system in your design, you can use the value mapping atom in the process flow instead. To add definitions to the scenario package, choose the definitions button in the scenario package design window. Then select the type of definition from the list and define the structure, variables or mappings with default values according to the type selected. When you deploy the scenario at the customer, the field values can be entered by the consultant or customer. Choose the data management button in the scenario setup window and select an entry from the list. In this case of a global table, the table name will appear in the list and is retrieved from the BIS store. The table contains a structure and you now enter the row and column data as shown here. By changing the codes in the table, the scenario can run in other companies with no design change. Let us look now at sender and receiver filters. The plug and play nature of a scenario allows the developer to test on his or her system and environment and then deploy to the customer system and environment by simply selecting new SLD entries at setup time. Furthermore, since the customer system has other activities and users, filters can be added to the scenario at setup time to avoid unnecessary processing by the integration framework. In our scenario design, we have already filtered purchase orders and filtered the sender system, OEC1. With these filters in place, however, the integration framework will process all purchase orders originating from OEC1. But we want to process only purchase orders for supplier V22000 and 222. 
Also, at scenario setup time, you can define the filter conditions. Choose the sender or receiver button and instead of defining the sender or receiver list, select the option to define filter conditions. In this scenario, the integration framework picks up purchase orders from the, from the defined sender system or systems. In this case, the sender system is OEC1. But as I said before, it will pick up all purchase orders coming from OEC1. Therefore, we can define a filter using an XPath expression to screen out only purchase orders for the supplier V22222. So now let's come to the demo. Let's go back to package design, click the definitions button and here you can see all the different settings you can use in your scenario package design, criteria fields, global variables, properties, tables, value mappings and some other things that I'm not going to cover here. If you have done so, the consultant or customer goes to setup and here we again have a data management button and you can here then provide values for global pro properties, local properties, value mapping and for our table that we have defined. So I select this one Click the plus and here I can now define a filter No, I map I map purchase orders coming for the vendor twenty two thousand two hundred and twenty two to the customer with the C. Now let's take a look at the sender filter definition. You cannot see anything in here right now because before we can do the filter definitions, we have to select the sender, uh, the sender system. So in our case, it is OEC1. We go back to the sender filter definitions still not there. Let's see. Define sender list. Selected this one. I guess I have also to select all the steps. Let's try again. Now we can see here um, a field for OEC1 for this second step and in here I can now add my filter condition. It says that I will only consider in this scenario step um, purchase orders coming in where the card code 
is V22222. So let's go back to our slides, the demo we had already. So in this unit you saw how to define tables, properties and mapping entries at design time, then add values at scenario setup time. You also saw how to define an XPath expression as a condition to filter events from an SAP Business One system. In the next unit, you will activate and test the B2B scenario. See you then.